All right, so do you guys want to read some patch notes? I don't like that SSG has made it to the patch notes. I gotta look, move, my, flip my camera over here. Here we go. Okay, patch note. All right, hello everybody. Welcome to patch notes for update sixty four. Uh, Chronoscope rewound. Let's take a look at what we're getting in the next patch. Um. This is featuring the legendary difficulty version of the Chronoscope. For those of you wondering what is legendary Chronoscope, it's heroic and epic Chronoscope. It's the same raid. I'm not excited for this. Maybe some people are. I think Chronoscope is one of the worst raids in DDO in its entirety. I have no idea why they made legendary. It is baffling to me. It is what it is. Uh, there's new items that drop out of Chronoscope, and the new items and rewards are very good, but I won't be holding my breath for that much longer. Um, also, Gameplay and balanced notes. Uh, there's now a copy of Expansion Pack Claim Vendors are in the Hall of Heroes. Instead of having to go all over the world to get the expansion stuff, they'll just be all in the Hall of Heroes as well, which is nice. They're in both places. Uh, the Secret Loot from Skeletons in the Closet can now be bought from Raid Runes. So if you want that Lindau's Belt or the Oz something, Oz, Osman's, Osmian Boots or whatever, guess what? Now you can buy them for 2,500 runes. There's Mailboxes in Ravenloft. Uh, the Dialogue Options in Ravenloft NPCs are now ordered in the Quest Order, which is just nice. Outburst, the electric end, looks way cooler. That's the big greatsword from the new raid. And there's a fate spinner in Windwood Hall. All of these things are very good. We've been wanting a fate spinner in Windwood Hall. That's in the uh, Feywild area since Feywild came out in 2021. And so uh, finally we have it added. And then we have bug fixes. So, bug fixes. Uh, Trasmith Workshop Guild Amenity no longer permanently stick inside your guild airship. Uh, Nightmare Lance has a better description. Uh, fixes to Henshin Mystic, where you actually, the tier 5, you could take it without actually having the, like, 5 monk levels and being level 12. Now you have to have that. Um, Henshin Mystic Capstone now actually works. It didn't apply the plus 1 multi, so this might make Henshin Mystic a lot better. Uh, Chimera's Crown and Fang have had some of their bugs fixed on the items. These are things I never tested because those items are either generally bad or require, um, uh, a bunch of, like, uh, what is it, the, the, the Dragon Marks to work. And they're not bad, it's just... I haven't played characters with that. I've only, like, theory crafted it, so I didn't know they didn't work, but apparently they didn't. Um, Gust of Wind Slow now has a save. It's not guaranteed slow from Gust of Wind. God, tier change. I hate the Druids and Druids Deep for this, and now it's better. Fix and Typos. Wild Hunter Deception now gives range power. Apparently it didn't. The Shout SLAs um, had their targeting parameters changed, so you can now use them. This is a problem where if you targeted somebody and then you tried to cast one of these spells, it would brick, uh, so that's apparently been fixed. Um... Scaling stuff, bug fixes, nothing super crazy in here. Fix some typos, fix some slays. Um, throw all the fungus lord. No longer reports you have slain a kobold. This is just a thing that would output. I get a lot of just straight up bug fixes. Apparently, Magus of the Eclipse didn't grant negative spell power. Now it does, which is funny. Um, fix some typos. Evil Stink now has a quest chalice, which is one of the quest character or quest givers. Uh, Primal Avatar Core, again, it's just a lot of bug fixes, basic stuff. Melf's Acid Arrow now does its correct damage when cancer from a monster and from a player. Basically, they buff Melf's Acid Arrows, but accidentally only for monsters. So they brought the monster damage down, and they actually made the player damage higher. So Melf's Acid Arrow is now dramatically stronger than it was before. I think it's like two times stronger. Um, still bad, but better than it was. Uh, and Ogre and Devil are no longer named melee and range. This is in one of the new quests, so that's nice. Um, Druidic Survival Mastery works in all wild shapes. That's the stuff you get off like the Ravenloft Bracers um, that give you extra defense in... Um, in wild shape, now that actually works in all forms, which means not just animal form, it's also in the uh, other wild shape forms. Uh, Talbron has more dialogue. The final boss of Monastery of the Scorpion can now just get killed, as opposed to getting to half and then resetting, which is nice. Uh, fix some typos, more typos. Added clarification, more typos. Fix some tooltips, more clarification. Um, clarified Dino Bone Crafting Augments make it look at the four spell power effects, physical spells, and light spell power effects, alignment spells. Um, I guess that's interesting. Uh, Curse of the Unbreakable now actually properly makes item immune to item damage. Curse of the Butterflies now properly displays butterflies. Curse of the Force Embrace now properly displays fireflies. And Curse of the Visionary properly grants true seeing. There's still a lot of bugs with the curses. If you have any bugs that you found with the curses, please throw them in the Hey Tonquin thread so that Tonquin finds it and fixes them um, because like half of the effects don't work. So if you find them that doesn't work, please report it and they'll get it fixed because they're working it down clearly. Um, Ill-Thid Conspiracy Dungeons, now properly in the Monster Manual. Collectible nodes have been removed from Search and Rescue, because there's all the ones that don't function, which is great. Um, I can't believe this quest has been out since, like, 2017, and those things have never worked, so I'm glad they fixed it. And the particle effect shown on enemies to indicate they have been card controlled to no longer change size unexpectedly. I don't even know what that is. Engineering. 
The inventory drop-down panel now respects your attack bonus per the feed spring attack and shot on the run. That's kind of neat. Uh, hirelings have a different type of map note compared to players. So now hirelings will have a different color dot on the radar. Very, very nice. Um, abilities have that apply on crit or on Vorpal now correctly apply to double strike to increase their damage. This is basically stuff like how if you had Sacred Flame Empowerment on Sacred Fist and then you crit with Sacred Flame Empowerment, it adds untyped damage that wouldn't double strike. Now it's fixed. Um, and that's a gigantic amount of damage, actually. Uh, that's just the first example. There's other examples. Uh, several changes have been made to how maximum hit points are calculated. I don't know what that means. Logging out to public space now causes you to have lower hit points and spell points if you log back in. Very nice. Um, bonuses to your base hit points from combat styles are displayed as a separate portion of your HP on your character sheet instead of being an effect bonus. Bonuses to your hit points and constitution from Reaper XP are now calculated in a different way behind the scenes. And leveling up now displays slightly more accurate HP estimations, which is nice. Uh, monsters in Chronos Legendary Chronoscope, apparently known issues, are not in the monster manual, and it is sometimes possible for your character to not render on the screen after appearing, entering the end fight of Chronoscope. Interesting. <laughs> so the Chronoscope, apparently it's so different that your character doesn't render. Very wacky. Anyway, this patch is mostly just like the Chronoscope and then bug fixes. So I like bug fixes, but, uh, and I don't know how the engineering is going to work, but we'll have to take a look at that. But nice. Good patch, I guess. I don't really care too much for Chronoscope. Sue me. I, I think the raid kind of sucks. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but the items, though, are dope. And I'm probably going to start talking about the items in a little bit. And uh, you'll see some new builds with some of the new items. Especially for level 20. There are crazy level 20 gear sets that are unbelievably easy to get. And uh, you'll be very excited for that. Or you should be very excited for that. <laughs> 